things theology, all things theology We chop it up properly, without an apology Gotta give doxology to God hollow Because this is how we do it at all things theology Grace and peace guys, welcome back to another episode of All Things Theology where I'm your host K-Dub And today, we're going to talk about the female version of Marcus Rogers, that's right (laughs) But before we do that, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel if you're not And as always, click the notification bell so you'll be aware when I drop good content So, yes, we're going to talk about the female version of Marcus Rogers, what I'm calling the female version And I think you're going to see a little why, why I say that, uh after we get to this video, someone sent me this video and was like, wow, this this female's, you know, resembles him a lot. Uh, she's growing in popularity. I mean, uh, you know, but the thing she's saying is unbiblical. The text she's using are uh, being eisegeted, you know, taken out of context. And so without further ado, let's just get into the video. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Shantia, and I am back with another banger, another word, okay? So listen, y'all, I got to... I, I'm gonna say this because when I when I first watched her, I was like, "Is this Nicki Minaj?" Like she sounds like Nicki Minaj to me. Not that I listen listen to her, but I, I obviously understand her, know her voice. But that that was the first thing that caught me. But we'll keep listening. Word for y'all today, and the title of this video is "God Said You Are Chosen." You are chosen, okay? You are the chosen one. You are the God that I mean, you are the one that God handpicked, okay? Even that, uh, we are the chosen one. Well, uh, we'll, we'll we'll get there in a second, but <laughs> I wouldn't say that we are the chosen one. Maybe the chosen ones, uh, the, you know, the elect ones. But we'll we'll, we'll get into her our proof text in a second. You are the one that God chose to use in this season. So listen, child, God led me to scripture. He led me to Isaiah 42, verse one. And it says, here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one and whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him and he will bring justice to the nation, to the nation. Listen, child, God wanted me to get on here to tell you that he chose you before you chose yourself. He chose you before you even before your mother even thought about conceiving you. OK, well, yes, all that is true. Right. I'm <laughs> I'm reformed. So I haven't I obviously, uh, you know, agree with us being chosen from the foundation of the world us, uh, election. Uh, I I. I, I, I find if I bet if I pressed her, if I had a conversation with her, she probably would not agree with even what all that, you know, but that's another subject. But the proof text she used is Isaiah chapter 42. Now, if you go to Isaiah chapter 42, um, she reads a little bit of it. OK, um, it says, behold, my servant whom I uphold, my chosen whom I sold the light. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry aloud or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break and a faintly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow. Yeah, he will not grow faint or be discouraged till he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands wait for his law. So what is this text talking about? Is is this a proof text for us? No, I would argue that's blasphemous. Why? Because this is a this was a prophetic uh, messianic text in Isaiah's time. How do we know this? How do we actually know this is what I'm saying? Well, <laughs> if you go to Matthew 12, this passage is actually quoted. And uh, Matthew 12, you can start at verse 15. Uh, Jesus, aware of this, uh, he had been obviously going through uh, battling the Pharisees because he's healing on the Sabbath, right? And they are conspiring against him to destroy him. That's in verse 14. Uh, and many followed him, that is Jesus, And he healed them all and ordered them not to make him known. This was to fulfill what spoken by the prophet Isaiah and then quotes Isaiah 42. Um, Jesus is the chosen servant. Um, He will proclaim the gospel to not only to the Jews and to the Gentiles. He will not quarrel, cry aloud, nor anyone hear his voice in the streets. Jesus was not boastful or proud in his ministry, trying to make himself well known. Verse 20, he was humble. But when he comes back, <laughs> you're going to see a different side of Jesus in that sense, you know, comparatively to his earthly ministry. But first off, foremost, she abuses the text like Marcus Rogers does. She applies a text that is about uh, Jesus alone 
right? It implies it to ourselves. We've seen this with Marcus Rogers saying that the government will be on his shoulders. We've seen him saying that the key of David, uh, he'll possess, you know, he's getting that preyed on by <laughs> Apostle Jonathan Ferguson. If some of you have watched some of my previous content, you saw when I did that video. But this is why I say she's the female version of Marcus Rogers. Uh, you know, only only a narcissist will uh, apply something ab about Jesus himself and, you know, apply it to themselves. Now, there's uh, to, to her credit, there are other texts she could have used um, to speak about the chosen. But this is not a good one because this is only speaking about Christ. Right. And so, uh, I, I mean, I would love to have a conversation with her and, you know, just I, I don't know what she believes. So this is the first video of hers that I've watched. The only and maybe if you guys will like, leave a comment and maybe I'll do more content because, you know, this stuff is very popular. Uh, we'll see uh, what I'm talking about here in a second. Listen, you are here for such a time as this. And he wanted me to speak on the fact that some of you are feeling isolated. Some of you have felt like you have always been the outcast your entire life. You felt like you've never fit in. You felt like you were the weird one or the enemy. Thank you, Holy Spirit, has tried to make you feel like you were the weird one or, or, or you were the one who just could not fit into any circle. But listen, God said that was not in vain god said it all had a purpose to it and, it and it is because god set you apart for such a time as this okay and so god wanted me to get on here just to remind you that you are chosen okay and so but wouldn't god have given you the proper text to use i mean i'm just asking okay god you know wanted you to get on here and give encouragement to his people i and i, I don't have any problem with that but wouldn't he give you the proper text when he, you know what I'm saying? I mean, that, that's what I find. Uh, God is giving you all these things to share, but he gives you the wrong text to use or I, I don't know. That, that, I just find that interesting. Um, um, the thing that I had wrote down was, Oh, thank you. Holy spirit. Um, God had reminded me at the simple fact that had I not been afflicted, okay. Had I not been afflicted, I would have never known that I was chosen. Had I not been betrayed, had I not been lied on, had I not been mentally, physically abused, had I not. Gone but you're you're I would argue that's not how you know your election, um, your chosenness. Uh, I would argue that the qualities of one's election, they're 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 being chosen by God is what uh, Peter says. You know, you're you're growing in grace, growing in holiness, growing in all these things. Yeah, so uh, uh, 2 Peter 1, uh, really verse 5 uh, through 10. Uh, let, let me read that for us. He's, uh, the Apostle Peter says, For this very reason, make ev every effort to supplement your faith with virtue, virtue with knowledge, knowledge with self-control, self-control with steadfastness, steadfastness with godliness, and godliness with brotherly affection and brotherly affection with love for if these qualities notice these are these qualities these characteristics if these things are possessed by you right if these qualities are yours and are, and are increasing they keep you from being effective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our lord jesus christ for whoever lacks these uh, qualities is so nearsighted that he is blind having forgotten that he was cleansed from his former sins therefore brothers be all more diligent to confirm your election and calling for if you practice these qualities you will never fall and so i i mean because of the things she uh, stated, I mean, unbelievers go through all those things as well, right? They go through hard times and, you know, depression. And, but I, I believe there's the qualities that I just named are, are the things that confirm our election, not, not what she just said, but that, that's a minor point through the things that I have went through, okay? Had I not been abandoned by my dad, had I not gone through right traumatic experiences as a, kid, go that. as a teenager, as a young adult, okay? I would have never known that I was chosen, okay? And so in this season, some of y'all just need to thank God. Thank you, God, okay? Thank you, God, that they betrayed me. Thank you, God, that they cheated on me. Thank you, God, whatever it is that has happened in your life, okay? Because had you not been a you wouldn't be the version of you that God is calling you to become, okay? And so God had to allow some things to happen in your life just so that you come to the realization of who you are through him and to know that you are chosen, to know that you are anointed, to know that can't nobody do it like you. Can't nobody do it like you. I don't care how many people are in your lane. Can't nobody do it like you. God said... I, I, I've been covering a lot of pastors who kind of do this same method method as well. It's it's all about you. Can't nobody do it like me. Well, actually, there is someone better. Uh, 
Christ himself. Like, wh why can't we point people to Christ <laughs> uh, rather than me, right? Uh, rather than us. Because actually, there are people who can do it better than me, right? I I am I am no one. Uh, matter of fact, God said He called the least of these, right? The 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 uh, lowly, and so yes, there there are people greater than me in that sense. Um, so it just kind of shows you the framework uh, some people come from in their theological perspective, which I don't think is biblical. You are the gift and the gift that He has placed inside of you is like no other. The gift of leadership, okay. The gift of bringing people together. I know they talked about you. I know your family doubted you. I know they talked about you. But listen, they're going to have to come back and get this wisdom that God placed inside of you. They're going to have to come back and ask for your help. The same ones, okay? Listen, so... Oh my God. Okay. Holy Spirit is flowing. Okay. So the one thing that I had wrote down was you are not alone. You are chosen. Okay. You are not crazy. You are chosen. Listen, child, you are not isolated for, for no reason. You are chosen, okay? You can't fit in. You are chosen, okay? And so I wrote down, according to, I don't know why I wrote this down, but this is for somebody, according to your faith, be it unto you, okay? And so right now, God is saying, what you come into agreement with matters. The scripture says, according to your faith, be it unto you, okay? What you believe about yourself, what you come into agreement, okay? With, with the thoughts that you are thinking, okay? This is the uh, classic word of faith, prosperity kind of uh, uh, ideology where it's, you know, if you think it, it will happen. It's it's positive thinking, uh, which is rooted in... Um, <laughs> not uh not not christian ideology uh the name is forget uh forgetting me one time but i remember justin peters uh talking about him um it is it is not a christian thought where if if you think it about yourself it'll happen um wh i mean I, I where does the bible teach that that my thoughts become reality um you know because you know the, you know prosperity gospel use this to to think hey well if you think money you think riches I know, I know you see a one dollar bill in your uh wallet but if you if you see that as a hundred god will manifest that reality and it's like well problem is that's missing nowhere in the bible or that's <laughs> that's nowhere in the bible it's missing from the bible um and i always ask these people how come if if this is true if this is what the the bible is teaching how come the apostles didn't actually experience that reality because they were uh poor uh lacking um persecuted beat right um all this thing uh but yeah that kind of just shows you like hey how, how come this didn't work the apostles but we experience it on a greater level that, that's 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 uh, quite interesting huh god is saying what you come into agreement with matters okay so you gotta align your thoughts with god's thoughts and the way to do that is to get in his presence is to study his word is to get to know his character who he is as a person okay so that his thoughts can become your thoughts so that anytime your old thoughts creep up anytime a traumatic experience creep up anytime those negative thoughts that people have spoke over you creep up you can uh spoiler alert never is holiness mentioned as for you know sanctification any kind of that it's all like my haters are my motivators kind of uh theology um you know it the things that are talked about material blessings never never hey growing you know in a in a greater spiritual sense and it's like i said holiness or you know forsaking certain sins that you're struggling with none of that is mentioned in this video the irony, like I said, you don't have to, to be a believer to want all the things she's actually, you know, saying that you should want. <laughs> that's, that's the irony of the prosperity gospel and, and, and word of faith gospel. You don't have to be a Christian to want those things. Everybody naturally wants to be rich. Everybody naturally wants a, a easy life. That's the thing. It's like you. So you're <laughs> you're tempting people with the very things that uh, man naturally wants. One, uh, two. That's a quota or, or, you know, formula for false assurance. Now fight back with it with the word of God. You can now replace it, okay, with God's love, with God's word, a word that can never return to him void, a promise that has to be fulfilled, okay? Listen, child. So, um, my God, this is a word for somebody. And so the things that I wrote down were... Um, 
Do you? Okay, listen. So the Holy Spirit was speaking to me about, y'all know how a lot of people like to um brag about like being chosen, like I'm chosen, I'm da -da -da -da, whatever the case is. And listen, all of that is fine and Danny, but child, when you really chose it, you ain't bragging on being chosen because- <laughs> I find that funny. She literally started this video out bragging about being the chosen one, right? And nobody can do it like you. It's like, man, I, I don't know if she hears herself. Like, does she hear herself? Because the very thing she's saying, you know, not to do, you don't, you don't got to do it when you got it. And it's like, wait, two minutes ago, you were just saying that you were just doing that. Uh, cognitive dissonance. I don't know. If you knew the things that come with being chosen, child, you would not want to brag on it. Okay. Because being chosen ain't for everybody. Listen, it ain't cute. It ain't pretty. Okay. The journey ain't always fun. Yes, it's rewarding, but being chosen is a real job. Being chosen is not for the faint. Okay. Listen, so I just wanted to say that real quick because the Holy Spirit had brought it to my attention. And so um, the other thing that I had. Like I said, this is all based on Isaiah 42, <laughs> uh, you know, what, one through three, which is only about Jesus. So uh, I, I, I want to remind you guys what this video is about, being the chosen. Just wrote down was God was just saying. Your gift is like no other. I don't know what your gift is, okay? I don't know what field you're in, okay? I don't care if you were just a um a grocery store clerk, child. In that moment, in this season, okay, your gift is like no other. Do not shrink yourself. Thank you, Holy Spirit. <laughs> Again, uh, you know, she goes to bragging about being the chosen, right? And the qualities we possess, then says, Hey, don't don't be brag. You don't got to do brag about it. Then goes about bragging about no one has this gift like us. I, 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 the irony in this video is astounding. God is saying, do not shrink yourself in this season. OK, know that you are chosen. Know that you are royalty. Know that you are a king's kid. Know that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. OK, know who you are from the inside out because there is nothing or no one that can come against you because of the living spirit that lives inside of you okay and the scripture says right here my chosen one in whom i delight first of all pause that should just tell you how yes pause uh that's not about you I mean, like i said you can go to there's other texts you can go to establish that right god delights in his uh in his people um right but this is about the <laughs> this is only about Jesus. If you would read the text, uh, see when it was actually fulfilled. See, this is why people I mean, hopefully I encourage people to study their Bible holistically and not proof text. Right. There, there, there can be a danger with just citing a text when you don't know the context around it. You don't know the historical reality the the, the prophetic fulfillment, if it is a prophecy and things like that. Uh, I, I mean, Jesus says himself, this was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah and notice he's saying about himself. <laughs> um, again, I, I, I find that interesting. Uh, like I said, I mean, go to, go to Ephesians one. If you want to talk about the elect, the chosen and right. Uh, you know, so delighted God is about you, how much God loves you. Yes. You, I don't care if you just now getting off the stripper pole child, God still wants you. God still wants you to get in his presence. As soon as you come off that pole, as soon as you come off that corner, God still wants you exactly where you are. We will never be perfect. Well, he don't want us exactly where we are. That's, that's, that's not true for any Christian. <laughs> uh, that's why he wants to sanctify us. Uh, y yes, come as you are, but don't stay that way. Enough for God. You will never be perfect enough for God. So you have to come exactly as you are and where you are. Okay. But the scripture says my chosen one and whom I delight, I will put my spirit on him and he will bring justice to the nations. Let Question uh, for you, uh, young lady. Is that talking about you? Is that talking about Christians? Are, are we the one that bring justice to the nations? Or is that about Jesus? He's the one who actually establishes true justice matter, matter of fact the, the text goes on and says in his name the gentiles will hope is that talking about us see you have to be careful you have to be careful about just proof texting because you can end up saying something that the text doesn't actually bring out and is actually very problematic theologically speaking since child god chose you God chose you. That's why you've been so afflicted. That's why you had to struggle so much in, 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 in your life. That's why things in your life. And we're almost done for those who are suffering <laughs> through this. <laughs> 
just didn't make sense. That's why you were thinking to yourself, why am I the only one that got to do this? Why can't I even relate to my peers? Why do my peers get to do that and have that and be that and da 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 da? But yet when I try to do it, something happens. Or yet when I try to do it, I feel like I'm getting convicted in my spirit. That's because God chose you. That's because God chose you, okay? And that means because God has a greater life, a greater purpose, okay, than you could ever imagine. You could ever imagine. You never would have thought you'll be walking around with security. You never would have thought people would have known your name. You never would have thought you'll be walking around um, getting autographs from people. So you have security, people know your name, and you give an autograph. So I, I, that, how does that not apply to unbelievers? That 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 is no marker of a Christian. Um, you know, especially when we wish we want people to know his name, not our name. But nevertheless, you don't have to be a Christian to want everything she just talked about. Matter of fact, you can be as pagan as they come. Like I said, that because you are not a Christian, I would argue those are things you naturally want. You naturally want to be known, famous. You, you know, you you take the glory, the spotlight instead of Christ. Like I said. Be careful of anyone pointing you more so inwardly than they do heavenly, heavenly word. You know, I, I think I said in my one of my last videos that, yeah, you need to be careful when 